I'm getting to a dollar, shawty, I ain't got the time I got money on my mind, hustlers on my line And that's just all the time, so I stay out on my grind I gotta drop this game, only tell you something what up, Team Colossus? So a lot of you guys will kind of struggle when it comes to, when you're thrown off your circumstance where you can't log things that you're comfortable logging, things you know the exact ingredients and serving sizes for. So what to do about that? Interrupted by coffee. Yes, I do. But first and foremost, something we're not gonna to spend too much time talking about here because it's pretty simple, as you can see here that I'm doing on the screen. For instance, if I'm having a Tim Hortons Boston Cream Donut, I might not just want to log Boston Cream Donut, I want to check if it's A on the website, which it is, and B if those accurate macronutrients are on my fitness balance. Likely if you're struggling with this, someone else will have too. Unfortunately, the barrier here is it only works for big box brands, so it only work with your really big franchise companies, not your local diner who might have something. So now we're going to go into the nuances that come and our top tips and our systematic checklist of how to log when eating out. I gotta drop this game, only tell you something that you don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might just have to play on you, I'll be places that you don't know. Step number two, given that the actual new... Shut up. Action. Step number two, given that the nutritional information isn't online or you don't have access to it, um, the next step I would take is I would actually recommend individually logging each ingredient. And the reason I say this is because there are a ton of variables that can take place when actually logging something. You can go from 300 calories that you think you're logging all the way to a thousand just because of extra things like condiments and sauces and things that you don't actually think about until you put it into my fitness pal. So that's the next the next step I would highly recommend taking. And if this isn't really a reasonable approach or something you can't exactly do because there are so many variables in play, um, I would highly recommend you know, trying to find something from a bigger franchise and matching up with it. So for example, let's say you're at a local pizza store, they don't exactly have that pizza slice from the store online. I would take something from a bigger franchise, compare the sizes, at least in your mind, and be able to log it into MyFitnessPal and get a more accurate representation. Now this is something where experience comes into play. You're not gonna be able to learn overnight, um, but by tracking macros for a longer period of time, you'll be able to eyeball things a lot better. Yeah, it's not a photo shoot, go. Okay, so you've gone through the first three, some additional tips I have for you that are imperative to logging when eating out. First and foremost, when in doubt, over log. This is something I really recommend, especially if you're dieting, because it really depends what direction you're going. But if you're dieting, you're definitely gonna wanna over log because you wanna be careful. If you're under logging, you're probably gonna mess it up and you could be significantly over. A lot of these foods like donuts and things from place to place can vary by how much oil they're having, if they're deep fried. Like these small additions, like a tablespoon of oil, that's like another 60 to 80 calories. That's something to really consider. So I really recommend over -log especially when unsure. Another great tool is overlog and then go by feel. So if you've overlogged, you've hit your macros, and at the end of the night you're like, I am more hungry than I've ever been in my entire life, then you know that you might be able to pin that down a little bit because you're kind of hungry. However, this is something, then again, I really recommend a more experienced, if fits your macros. It's definitely easier to eat at home and eat at safer places, but that is not always reliable to life. When you're competing, unfortunately, this isn't your best area to make sure you're being exact and precise towards your goals, so I would avoid it, but those are just some other final tips to help you guys with. Number five, and I'm serious about this one, this is the one I'm the most passionate about. When you're logging on the go, my best advice is to log everything beforehand because you're gonna be real surprised how quick things add up when you eat out. Instead of your normal allocation of like 600 to 900 calories for a meal, some meals eating out can be upwards of 2,000 calories if you're going hard. And especially if you plan on going hard at night, like for me sometimes I'll go out and I'll have 10 wings and half a thing of fries. And that is actually like a ton of calories and over 75% of my fat. So I make it a place to log it the day before and then I work around that big meal of eating out. I've had experience going there. If you really have no clue what's going on, you're going to a wedding or something, this happens to a lot of my clients, I recommend just keeping it in check and log it before, see if it fits, and if it fits, you can have it. If it doesn't fit, just stop it like a normal day and you'll have no hurt. And that's just really the easiest way to do it. It'll get easier over time. It might feel a little bit new at first, but that's okay. You can get very experienced 
and eventually you'll be a pro. Hopefully that helped guys. Let us know if you have any questions down below. Thanks for checking this video out and all of our funny shenanigans that went through. Peace. You ain't bulking if you're a monster and not eating turkey, pumpkin, that. What the heck is this? Call me Haymaker. Always going big. Yeah, you know the kid.